Welcome to the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. This podcast is brought to you by the Jefferson County Department of Health. Hello, everyone. This is Jarvis Escott with What's Happening Birmingham. Today, I have the honor and pleasure of being with Dr. Kalia Brown. She is a doctor here at the Jefferson County Department of Health. Dr. Brown, thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having me. Great. I want to bring the doctor on because if you've heard the news, the FDA, if I got correct, they have done the emergency authorization for ages 5 to 11. So now, you know, of course, earlier this year, adults are qualified. They get the emergency authorization for to get the COVID-19 shot. Now, the children can get it. So I want to bring the doctor on to kind of just talk about the process and kind of answer any questions people may have as far as the symptoms and maybe the effects and any hesitancy issues. So Dr. Brown, how are you doing today? I am doing great. How are you? And good. Before we start, we'll connect the dots. We actually attended UAP together. We did. We did. So it's, so it's like, no man, like, yes, everything going full circle. We had a chance to reminisce on the old Hill Center, not the Hill Center you all see now, the Hill Center that when it rained, it's the day to put the snow bags, the weather bags, or sandbags. Yep. Those were the days. So, so tell me about what the FDA has done recently with, um, you know, getting the authorization for the COVID-19 shot. So recently with this um, FDA emergency use authorization, what it did was qualify 28 million children in the United States from 5 to 11 um, to be able to receive the COVID-19 vaccine, which is a huge step into um, getting us to the point where we can um, get back to some semblance of normalcy, especially for our children who have, you know, endured this pandemic for 20 months being unprotected. So tell me, what was the, the trial process with this and how did it differ from the trial process they did with adults? So, um, yeah, what I tell people is that we never test anything on children until we know that it's safe on adults. So typically any medication, any vaccine is going to be studied in a lab first, and then it's going to go to some type of animal. Um, and then it's going to go to adult trials, which is the phase three of trials. And then, then you will see it come to kids. And so typically what happens when it comes to our children, um, they're really looking to figure out what the appropriate dose is for the children. They know that it works. They know that it's safe and effective before they ever give it to any child in a trial. At this point, we're looking to see what's the appropriate dose um, for that age. So they, they start with um, kind of a graduated um, kind of sequencing. So um, with the current COVID vaccine for 5 through 11, it's one third of the, of the adult dose. And so that they'll do that. And as you get younger, the dose will get strong, will get smaller. Um, and then they'll just make sure that with a smaller dose, how much dose does it take to give the children the appropriate amount of response that they get? So we don't ever want to give you less than what you need to get the correct response, but we also don't want to give you more than what you need either. Okay, and before we kind of back up for a second, you know, I'm glad I got you on that you can kind of clear up some misconceptions. So with a vaccine, the vaccine does not have the virus in it. Is Am I correct on that? Correct. The vaccine absolutely does not have the virus in it. A mRNA RNA vaccine, what I've been trying to, um, you know, tell the children, because they really want to know what they're getting as well. Um, mm -hmm. I What I tell them is it's like me giving you the answers to a test. So the okay. messenger RNA, it comes in, it tells the body to create a protein that is similar to what you've heard a lot. If you've looked at the diagram for COVID, you see it's got those little red spikes on the diagram that's called a spike protein. So this, huh. this vaccine basically tells your body to, pre to create a protein similar to that. And then your body recognizes it and learns how to fight against that. So then when you are exposed to COVID, it's gonna mount a response. You never have any of the COVID virus in your body with this vaccine. And the great thing about the mRNA vaccine is once it gives your body the message or the answer to the test, it mm -hmm. uh, goes away on its own within weeks. And so it doesn't even stay in your body. It does what it needs to do. It gives your body the message and then it moves on. Okay. now. What have been some documented either side effects the, the, the studies show that after the kids have taken the okay. vaccine? So, so children have um, a similar side effect pro 
profile as adults. But the uh -huh. good thing is, is they tend to get side effects less often than adults. So in children um, 16 and older, we saw uh -huh. side effects in them about 17.2% of the time. But uh -huh. in the studies, children 5 to 11 only had side effects about 6.5% of the time, which is great. But when they do have side effects, it's very similar to what we've seen in adults. So the first one is what you see with most, um, you know, most shots is soreness in the arm um, and then fever, fatigue, muscle aches, lasts about 24 to 48 hours and then um, improves. Okay. And one thing I've been kind of hearing in the news, I'm glad I got you on. You can give me kind of like the, the medical professional that you are uh, response to answer to this question. Is there any such thing as natural immunity in kids at that young age when it comes to this so far? Okay, so when we use the term natural immunity, um, I don't really necessarily like that term. You have to, what we mm -hmm. have with COVID is either you have a disease mm -hmm. immunity, so you have disease induced immunity, meaning you have had to catch COVID in order for your body to respond and generate an immune response, or you have a vaccine induced immunity, meaning you got the vaccine. And again, that messenger RNA kind of gave you the answer to the test and you've created immunity that way. And so, yes, children can develop a disease induced immunity, but here's, uh -huh. here's, here's the catch. Um, you know, first of all, early on, a lot of our kids weren't even being tested. So we really don't know, did you have COVID? Uh -huh. Did you not have COVID? For a long uh -huh. time, our, our children weren't being tested. Um, even if you're, even if your child did have a a, a PCR or a rapid test positive COVID test, mm -hmm. we don't know how long their immunity will last okay. with, with after having COVID. So it may last a month, it may last three months, it could last six months, but we don't know with each child how well their system handled it and how much of an immune response they got from having having have disease immune disease induced immunity. So that's why we say even if your child has had um, COVID within the pandemic, they still need to get vaccinated so that we can sure they have that they have the appropriate amount of immunity to continue to fight off this virus because you can get it again. Now, if you all if you see me looking down a little bit, I'm looking at a couple of questions to make sure since I got here with me, make sure I answer every question. I want to make sure, especially for your parents out here, they may think of different questions. Now, do, do the person have to do like the first and the second shot just like the adults to get Yes, children five okay. to eleven still get they're getting the Pfizer vaccine, so they get one vaccine, and then uh -huh. in three weeks, in twenty one days, they'll get their second vaccine, and then two weeks after that, we would say they have full immunity. So if you got your child vaccinated this week, it's the eighteenth today that we're recording this. Um, if you got mm -hmm. them vaccinated by the end of this week, they would have full protection by Christmas. That oh yeah, going to see grandma, doing all the things that they haven't been able to do in a while. They would be able to do that, and you would be confident um, and be able to feel comfortable that they that they were coming into an environment and not bringing something to grandma and, or an elderly family member. And we're doing this video by coincidence, everyone, because we know we're hitting the holiday season, and we're so happy to be hitting the flu season as well. So this is a great time to go ahead and get the vaccine. Not only for yourself, but get for your kids because this is the time of year you're going to come in with different pockets of people that you normally don't come in contact with. Yeah, and that's that's such a great point, um, you know, about getting your child vaccinated for COVID. But please don't forget that flu vaccine either. Um, you know, children get very ill with the flu. Um, you know, I think people don't realize, especially especially our little bitty ones um, can get really, really sick with the flu. So with flu, we think of young children and, and, and the elderly population. So making sure that you have both of those vaccines as you go in and, and you meet with family and gather with family this holiday season, it's gonna be really important um, because then those, those children are gonna travel back home and go to school. And we wanna make sure that, that we're not bringing COVID or flu back into our schools to you know our, our principals, our teachers, the janitors, um, our wonderful lunchroom um, people and our other classmates. Now, I know you mentioned, and I'm actually Googling some of uh, this term. Now, you, you mentioned like mRNA vaccine, and that's the, another one they got called viral vector vaccine. Have so, you heard that the, term? yes, so the viral, the viral vector vaccine is a little bit different, and I'm not a, I'm not a virologist, um, but okay. basically that is a, it, it, operates it's more of a traditional type vaccine um you would see that if if you think closer to some of some of the um 
immunizations or shots that we have against traditional vaccines. And I think that's what's thrown people off is they hear the mRNA vaccines are Mm -hmm. new. They're brand new. We've never used them before, but it's actually technology that's been around for over 20 years. It's been studied for over 20 years, which is part of why um, it could be produced so quickly. Um, It just happened to be that COVID ended up being um, the best candidate for this type of vaccine. They've been trying to find ways to utilize this type of technology for years. Um, A viral vector vaccine is more of a traditional type vaccine that that we're used to seeing. Now, this next question I'm about to ask, because you know, one thing I always like to do in my podcast is kind of like if this person is kind of watching it, what question they would ask. But I think this is a question that I guess people have always asked when it comes to vaccines, especially for parents. And, you know, we just got the straight up question, can this vaccine give kids autism? No, this vaccine cannot give children autism. The studies look great um, on children. There were actually zero um, serious issues um, with children after receiving this vaccine in 3,000 children. And now we've vaccinated millions of children so far in the United States just in this short amount of time that... um, that it's been that we've been eligible that children five to eleven have been eligible, um, and so it seems that children are doing very well with this vaccine. Um, you know, I give I'm a pediatrician, so I give vaccines every day. I'm a huge vaccine proponent, um, just because if you think about it, you, Jarvis, you and I, we have no idea what a case of smallpox looks like. Why is that? Because our parents got vaccinated from for smallpox and polio. Um, my children have no idea. Really, they've never seen a case of chicken pox. Whereas I grew up, everybody got chicken pox. Why yeah, is that? Because <laughs> they got a chicken pox vaccine that we did not have. Yeah. And so now they don't know what that looks like. So imagine a world for our grandchildren, or our great grandchildren, where they're like, what is COVID? What was that? That's where we want to get. And that's where immunizations get us. It's the it's one of the greatest modern medical improvements that we've had. We've saved millions of lives with vaccines. So we've been in this pandemic, I guess, you know, past 18 months, like just looking back, you know, through your eyes, how has it changed more of the study in your opinion about this, I wouldn't say this virus? So I think um, people for the first time have really seen science play out in real life. All of Mm -hmm. the things that people are seeing happen in a lab, happen, um, you know, with researchers Mm -hmm. every day. We just usually don't see it when there's an issue, when there's a disease, um, you know, the researchers go in the lab and they start working on figuring out how to solve it. And and it's kind of a trial and error. Did this work? Did this not work? Actually, we figured out that this is the sequence or this is the sequence. Um, It wasn't exactly what we thought. So we're going to take it back and we're going to work on it. Um, And so I think people have seen that play out in real life, but not Mm -hmm. really understanding that that happens with you know, any type of medication that you've ever taken, any um, vaccine that you've ever given to your child, it's the same type process. It's just that this is a novel virus, meaning we've never seen it before. So we had to learn when COVID first came on, you know, we thought a lot of things about COVID. Some of it was, some of it was real, some of it wasn't. But what we were trying to do was save lives. So we were being extra cautious. We think this might be going on. So let's stop X, Y, and Z, let's put on a mask, let's social distance. You know, people were, um, you know, using sanitizing wipes for their groceries and all kinds of things that we, as Mm -hmm. time went on, the science proved out to us that we did not necessarily have to do. And so that's why we, how we got to the point of knowing, you know, social distancing works, masks work, um, you know, keeping your hands clean works. Um, But that is, that's science. It's Mm -hmm. learning what works. Um, as time goes on. And so I think it's been really neat as a scientist, as a doctor, to see that in, in real life mm-hmm. and to see people um, really understand what it takes to cure disease. Um, but it saddens me that we've had to lose over 720 Americans to, to this disease um, to get to this point. And I hope this will be a pivotal um, time for us, both in America, in America, and you know, in in the world, as understanding how science works, the importance of science, investing in science, um, so that I, so that our children and our grandchildren's generation don't have to relive something like this. Now, in the back of the clinical trial, how long was the actual trial for the duration from the minute they took the shot to, you know, the 
how long was it? it was like three months? The trial? So people who got vaccines in the trial are actually still being studied. They're still okay. being followed. They will follow them years out. Um, again, to look to see, are there any long-term effects? Yeah, that's they will follow it out. Yeah. Yes. They will follow um, all of those all of those participants out. Did those participants get COVID again? Did they develop anything else that we need to be concerned about? And that's how, like I said, they do any medication, any vaccine that you've ever, you know, been given in the United States. That's how it's studied. And so that's how we know long term these, these potentially could be the side effects or long time term, there are no um, side effects. And that's just, again, that's how science works. It takes a lot of time, um, you know, a lot of patience and a lot of attention to detail to, um, you know, figure out what's going to happen and how well it's going to happen and then how to make adjustments like these boosters. That's an adjustment. That's a scientific adjustment because we found out that they, that we were having breakthrough um, infections. So the scientists went back and adjusted. So now we're given boosters to make sure that we keep the correct amount of immunity. And that comes through studying those initial people who got the vaccine out long term. So as they begin to start seeing see through breakthrough um, cases, that's how they figured out we're going to need a booster and then figuring out how much of a booster we needed to have in order to get our immunity back up to where we needed it to be. So based on what you see, maybe let's just say six months or we're heading to the winter season, do you think we're going to see another variant possibly? Or this is... I would love to say no, but mm -hmm. one thing we know about viruses is that they want to survive. They want to continue to spread so that they can continue to invade something and survive. So they learn and grow and move and shift just like anyone else would. And so the longer that we allow COVID to stay around in our community and continue to infect people, it's getting smarter, it's learning, it's changing, it's finding ways to survive. So the best thing that we can do is to continue to take those precautions, but most importantly, to get vaccinated. For every person that we get vaccinated, that's one more person that COVID cannot invade and learn and change. And once we get to a point where we have enough people vaccinated, it's got nowhere to go. And so it can't continue to work through our environment and learn how to survive. You know what surprised me the most like last winter was that we had actually, I don't know whether this correct me if I'm a drop in flu cases in the winter time for the first time because of COVID, because everybody's doing the mask. Right. Again, another thing that you know I've been doing, I've been doing pediatrics for 16 years and I've never seen a flu season like this where we just really had we had no flu, we had no RSV, we had no strip. Our children actually got to stay in school in you know, December and January when there's usually a lot of children who are out due to illness. Um, but those masks, just like they protect from, from COVID, they protect respiratory illness. Again, science playing out real life, um, but just showing us how, how it works and how you can prevent things, why covering your cough is so it, it, you know, important, why staying at home when you're sick is so important. We were doing all of those things and so our children didn't get sick. But I hope that we take that knowledge. Um, even, you know, what a lot of schools don't have a mask policy right now or aren't mandating masks. I hope that we take that um, on through these through the through the years that we've learned how important it's, it is to stay at home when you're sick, to make sure that we're washing our hands, to make sure that we get have good respiratory hygiene. We've seen it. Our children know what it looks like yeah. when we do those things and how yeah. it keeps them healthy. So any final thoughts? You, I think I know we covered quite a lot, and I hope I've answered just about everybody's question. I'm going to give out a phone number in a minute that you all can call if you got any questions about it or visit you know, just the Department of Health website about it. Um, any final thoughts you want to add? Uh, to I think parents? that I, you know, encourage, encourage parents to talk to your provider if you're still hesitant about getting your child vaccinated. Um, but one thing I really want them to remember is that as, as a parent, as a pediatrician, um, you know, we talk a lot about COVID, that we don't have a lot of deaths from children with COVID, which is true. Although we have had deaths in the United States um, from healthy children from COVID, but it is rare. But I want people to understand that we don't just want our children to survive, we want them to thrive. And what that means for them in COVID, they've already lost you know, they've got an educational lag, they've lost socialization, they've got, 
you know, anxiety and emotional issues from the isolation and quarantining. Our way out of that is vaccinating our children. We want them to thrive. And the way that we can help them do that is to get them vaccinated so they can get back to doing the things that they normally do, doing those things that help them grow mentally and emotionally and socially. And one thing I want to add too, parents, you all got to follow the example too. You got to go get the shot as well. Don't just let your kids get the shot and then you're still walking around with it because you could possibly, you know, it's, it it's, so, it's so important. You're, you're right, Jarvis. Um, worldwide, 1.5 million children have lost a primary or secondary co- caregiver to COVID. That's just startling to me that there's 1.5 million children who have buried the most important person to them in their life due to COVID. Um, So that's one of the best things that you can do for your children is to vaccinate yourself. That means you're not bringing it into their home. As parents, we never want to do anything that would put our children in danger. And so what you can do for them is is get vaccinated. And if they're five and above, get them vaccinated. Because again, we've still got those children birthed through four who still aren't eligible for a vaccination. Um, and then we've got those children who may have an underlying condition. Maybe they've got cancer. Maybe they've got a disease that prevents them from getting vaccinated. We want to make sure that we're keeping those children safe as well. Yeah, and also on a personal note, I actually went and got my booster shot today. So, Good. Yeah, so that's what I'm done for now. I'm going to say for now. Right. <laughs> done and protected. You have a great Thanksgiving and a great Christmas. Yeah, yeah, for now. Um, So if you all got any questions, especially for people that's looking at my, listening to my podcast on Apple Podcasts now, the phone number, if you want to sign up, if you're in Jefferson County, is 205-858-2221. I'll repeat it again, 205-858-2221. Or go to jcdh.org for more questions. Or go to cdc.org or .gov, I want to say, um, if you got any more questions. but. Dr. Brown, thank you for coming on today. Thank you so much, Jarvis, my fellow Blazer. Yes, yes. You see how things just come full circle. They do, um, they do. And everything. But I have to bring you back on, you know, a couple of future segments. I love, I don't have a pediatric doctor that come on from time to time. So I know there's some other questions I may, you know. I'd love to talk to you again. Great, great. So thank you all for watching this video. Please check out what's happeningbrownout.com for more videos. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and check me out on Apple Podcasts for those of you who are on Apple and love the iPhone and iPad. Thank you all again and have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Please check out our website app or subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos today.